Um, so I'd like to tell you a story today. I think a conference like this, so what better place to tell stories, right? We have so many stories that we've heard already. I'm going to tell you our story. It's a story of how we at Pocket Prep migrated from Vue 2 to Vue 3 with class components. If you haven't heard of Pocket Prep, this is us. We're a company that makes um, apps for people to study for professional certification exams. So again, still kind of teaching, still educating. Um, one of my favorite exams is Certified Ethical Hacker. If you want to be a Certified Ethical Hacker, there you go. And you know who I just learned is studying to become a project manager? Our uh, MC, Ken. So maybe he'll be your project manager. I don't know. So uh, our story is one about searching for the best TypeScript experience in Vue. So that's kind of the overall theme of what we're looking for in Vue 2, what we're looking for in Vue 3. So even if you aren't using class components, some of this, if you're trying to use TypeScript, might still apply. As we're doing this story, we're going to look through the options API and the class components in Vue 2. That's kind of the decision that we had to make back when we first made our apps. And then now, looking forward to Composition API, what it looks like when you're still on class components and looking at switching to the Composition API. So let's go back to uh, early 2019, maybe, um, yeah, very beginning of 2019, when, uh, as Evan mentioned earlier this week, Vue 3 was being worked on but not released yet. So if you were to create a Vue app with Vue 2 in 2019, you might create it with the Vue CLI, where you do the create command, you get these nice options. Do you want to use Vue Router, Vue X? One of the questions is, would you like to use class style component syntax? Seems like a normal, honest question. So for us at Pocket Prep 2019, wanting to evaluate that question, looking at the options API, the class component API, what does it look like? Which one do we like more? So Let's just kind of do a little bit of a comparison here. This is not an exhaustive list, but it's just a few possible things that you can look at. So looking at reactive data, options API, maybe you remember this when you first learned Vue or when you first saw the options API, that there's that moment where you're like, oh yeah, it's a method that has to return an object. So it's just a little, little gotcha. Uh, the class component API, it's just a normal class property, the same way that you would usually do a property on a class if you're used to classes. So then looking at methods, it's kind of the inverse gotcha. It's not a method. It's an object with methods on it. So just a little bit of an extra thing to remember. Once you learn it once, you know it, and you don't really have to worry about it. But still, class components, it's just a class method, just like any other class method. So, so far, a couple small little points for class components, actually, back in 2019 world. So then uh, looking at props with, again, the lens of really wanting a good TypeScript experience. For someone who's really used to TypeScript and you look at the options API and you have something like a JavaScript prototype, capital S string being thrown in there as the type, you're kind of like, ah, it's a little icky. I'd rather use a TypeScript type. So then looking at class components, you're actually able to do that just using a TypeScript type, lowercase s, string, kind of feels familiar in a way. Uh, especially for people coming from like Angular, if you're kind of looking at that comparison, then it's even more of a you know, familiar thing. So uh, emitting in Vue 2, you had dollar sign $emit. In class components, you still can use dollar sign $emit, but there's an added choice of something else you can do, which is an emit decorator, where you wrap the class method with that decorator, and then it not only emits the event name, but it also takes whatever the return of that method is and it emits that payload with the event. So a little bit of an extra bonus for class components. So all of that, we were like, all right, we'll give it a try. It seems like it's, you know, Vue CLI is asking us about it, so it must be a relatively normal path. Might try it, give it a chance. Um, so we were pretty happy, actually. We, so Pocket Prep has um, four apps. We have a study app where people actually answer study questions, an instructor dashboard for people to monitor study activity, a CMS where writers, editors, subject matter experts can create the study content, a support tool for customer support for debugging, and a UI kit that we made for a view component library for reusable components that are used across those four apps. So all of those built Vue 2 class components. So we're pretty happy with it. It's actually working fine. Everything, no complaints, um, relatively smooth onboarding experiences. People seem to have a pretty low learning curve, pretty comfortable. Uh, we're just waiting for Vue 3. So uh, the very early days of Vue 3 actually had whispers of a core class API proposal. So that was interesting. We were like, OK, that would be cool. Um, that was actually pretty short-lived, got dropped relatively quickly for plenty of totally valid reasons. 
And for those of us using class components, it was actually not that big of a deal because we were already used to view class component and view property decorator were these other packages that were how you used class components in view two. So we were like, that's fine. We don't need the class API for view core. We'll just wait for view class component and view property decorator to migrate to view three. Once they do that, we'll migrate to view three. So that didn't really happen. So it turns out the, uh, those packages, view class component and view property decorator, just basically stopped pushing updates. They, they just, maintainers went dark, uh, not really making any plans to migrate to view three whatsoever. So we were in this place trying to kind of figure out what our options were at that point. And I don't know, like any, uh, any good developer, we just kind of procrastinated. We were like, let's wait and see. <laughs> let's see if anybody else uh, comes up with another way of doing this. Best case scenario, we want someone to be able to give us an option for keeping our main class style syntax just in view three. Worst case scenario, maybe we're going to have to just literally rewrite all four apps in the component library all into either options API or composition API all at one time. We weren't opposed to using the composition API. It was just the effort of doing it all at one time as opposed to what we really wanted, getting to view three and then being able to do it a bit at a time. So uh, this was a little bit of a period of turmoil in the view community. Um, there were a lot of heated GitHub issue threads about like class components or not class components. Um, we didn't really care that much at Pocket Prep about that aspect of it. We really just wanted a good TypeScript experience and we just happened to have like a million class component components lying around. So we just wanted to get to Vue 3 somehow. If you're more interested in that kind of history, I wrote a Medium article about like a bunch of links linking to GitHub issues and like the announcement when the class API proposal was dropped and it's kind of an interesting timeline. Um, so you can look at that if you want. Uh, so we're just kind of waiting, seeing what's going to happen, looking for what's next. Uh, turns out exactly what we were hoping for did happen. So a package called Vue Facing Decorator did actually come around um, doing the exact same thing, picking up the baton that Vue Class Component and Vue Property Decorator dropped. And the whole goal here was to be able to support the same class component syntax in Vue 3. So I'm just going to go through a little bit of what that's, that process was like for us. For any of the few of you out there who are still on Vue 2 using class components, this is hopefully going to help you get to Vue 3. So obviously, you just have to install a package. Um, literally, just global find and replace a Vue property decorator or a Vue class component, if you were using that, with Vue facing decorator. This was like 90% of it, just kind of doing these two things. So compare the effort of that with having to rewrite all of your components to either options API or composition API. This was huge, like to be able to get us just onto Vue 3, being able to run and build the app. So there were a few other quirks though. So to go through some other little details, um, if in Vue 2, if you had class properties initialized with an expression using like this dot, then doing that directly in the class property was no longer valid. You needed to move it to something like mounted. Um, dollar sign emit calls in view two, and this is true for view three in general, that view three was stricter about needing to define or declare your emitted events. And so in class components, there was actually a convenience here for view three with view facing decorator. If you used at emit, then it actually defined that emit for the event that you were emitting was going to be defined for you. So you didn't have to do it in two places. Um, if you were using something like before route update or any of the other view router hooks or any other third party library using a similar kind of thing where it put it on the top level of the options API object in view facing decorator, you just need to nest it one level deeper on the options object within the decorator. And then view facing decorator also through this two native API, um, addressed an obstacle that the original class API proposal actually also ran into which is that there are two flavors of decorators now. There's the TypeScript decorator, the kind of commonly called the legacy decorator now. Um, it's turned on using the experimental decorators flag in your TS config. There's that. And then there's also the TC39 stage three proposal decorators for JavaScript decorators. Those are actually slightly different. And the way that view facing decorator addresses that is actually by supporting both. So if you, if you have experimental decorators turned on, then you're still able to use the legacy decorators. If you set experimental decorators to false, then if you use, if you wrap your export, your default class exports with two native, then you can also use the TC39 stage three proposal decorators. Uh, so that's just the class component specific kind of realm of the migration, which honestly is relatively minimal compared to the rest of the migration that you have to do just for normal webpack to Vite if you're doing that. Uh, view two to view three, looking at the list of breaking changes, all of those things still apply. 
But for the pieces that are specific to class components, this was, at least for us, about it. Now, this is not an exhaustive list for everybody's context, obviously. If you were using more complicated architectures of class components with inherited classes, for example, we were not doing that. But if you are doing that, then view facing decorator does still support that, but you just would have to, it's not listed here. You'd have to go look at the documentation more. Um, so then other questions that people have about this package is just, is it being maintained? Can I trust it? We've been using it on production for all four of those apps for a while and the component library. Uh, it is also actively being maintained with things like paying attention to the stage three proposal of decorators and also intending an upcoming beta to ship both common JS and ES module versions of the package. So it is being maintained. It's paying attention to patterns and upcoming um, things that NPM packages need to be doing now. So let's go back to the composition API. Now that we're on view three, we have this opportunity now. We made it to view three, right? We did it. Like we could kind of just stop there. But what we want to do now is we want to know what are our options now that we've made it to view three. So we have our class components. But what if we also want to think about switching to the composition API? And so what we're looking at is looking at this through the lens of what's a really good TypeScript experience. So we want to see what kind of TypeScript experience we have now with the composition API and script setup. So the left side here is literally the exact same thing that we saw in the last comparison. Just the only thing that's different is you're importing from view facing decorator now instead of view property decorator. And then for the composition API, we have this example for reactive data. You just do const some data and you want to make it reactive with ref. So kind of what you say you want is what you write. So this is all well typed. It's perfectly like no complaints from a TypeScript perspective. And then for methods, you just want a method. You say const some method. It's well typed. You have a method. Like even saying this, like what I say you want is what you write. It's so intuitive. It's hard to complain about anything about it. Um, so define props. This one's actually kind of interesting. From a, from a TypeScript perspective, for somebody who has spent a long time using TypeScript, the first time you look at this might actually feel a little bit like a code smell kind of thing. Like you're sort of like, why am I passing a type parameter but not using that type parameter to enforce a real parameter? Like that's not something that you would usually do in TypeScript. So it's important to remember that this is a compiler macro. So this is ultimately something that the view compiler uses this define props function as a way to get access to that type parameter. So that's a little odd, but it's also worth pointing out that there's actually a little bit of a TypeScript code smell with the class component that we glossed over before, which is this exclamation point. So when you're using class components, you're declaring this property and you're saying it's going to be a string, but TypeScript doesn't actually have a way to know that it is definitely a string because you're not initializing the value. You can't initialize values in class components with like some prop equals a string. You have to use the default over here to actually hook into the options API. So there actually is a little bit of a sacrifice that you're making either way from a TypeScript perspective for class components or the composition API. But the composition API still ultimately is giving you what you want as a TypeScript developer, which is being able to use the intuitive TypeScript type instead of the JavaScript object prototype, like capital S string. Um, kind of similarly for define emits, the define emits is a compiler macro that allows you to use regular TypeScript types to define the events that you want to emit. In this case, the something event doesn't actually have a payload, so it's just an empty tuple type, but that tuple would allow you to define the payload type as well if you wanted to pass something with the event. So uh, that's a really good TypeScript experience with the composition API and the script setup. So at this point in view three, it's really satisfying to be able to get to the point where you're on view three and you have the choice for anyone who just really loves class components. Like it does still work and you can still have that same TypeScript experience that you had in view two, but you now have the ability to opt into switching on a component by component basis to something like the composition API and script setup, which is so much more flexible and comfortable and a happy place to be. So just to, to recap here, if you are using class components, please tell me. I just checked my wallet. I have $6. I will give $6 to anybody who walks up to me and tells me their story of using class components. So this, well, not anybody, the first person, I have $6. So, uh, so if you're using class components, please do let me know. You can send me a message, an email, whatever. Somehow, I would really like to hear about it. There's a view facing decorator Discord. So if you join that, um, there's a community of people there who are actively migrating from view two to view three with class components and trying view facing decorator. And if anybody ever runs into issues with it, then we can address questions there. 
Um, view facing decorator is the tool that at this point, if you are still on view two class components and you're just trying to get to view three, give view facing decorator a shot. And if you run into issues, then let the view facing decorator discord know. I'm relatively active on there. I try to help people when they run into issues. So now that you're there in view three, then you have a lot of options and it's a really satisfying place to be. Once you have that choice of being able to choose class components or the composition API with script setup, it's a good place. It is worth pointing out that if you're hoping to get access to things like vapor mode, like script vapor, then that's something that you probably want to try to get there sooner rather than later so that you have that ability to opt into switching your components from a class component to a script vapor kind of component. So. Hopefully, this will give some people a path there and give some options for people who otherwise maybe felt like how we felt when we were a little bit stuck. But that's it. That's it for me. Thank you so much.